Sony's PlayStation 2 is by far my favorite game console. There's just such a huge library of great games. It had some really cool features for the time. It was a pretty awesome DVD player, but it didn't have so great video output. If I could, if I could make my ideal gaming console, it would probably be the PS2, but saved natively, you know, your memory card. Instead of using memory cards, it could save natively to the hard drive and would just have cleaner video out. Even if it stayed 480p, as long as it stayed 480p or 240p and could then be cleanly upscaled, would be good to go. One of my favorite consoles of all time. And there is a huge library of awesome games for it. So in this video, here are five PlayStation 2 games that you should play. Not all of these will be purely PS2 exclusive, but all that matters is that you try playing them at all because some of these games are really freaking fun. Let's start out with Champions of Norrath. This is a top-down action RPG set in the EverQuest universe. It uses an upgraded version of the same game engine as the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games, and man, it looks good. You want an example of games with amazing graphics on the PS2, Champions of Norrath is one to go with. Water flows with you as you move through it, fire looks realistic and they simulate the ambient light that comes away from it, there are little rats and spiders that move around the maps, corpses stay persistent throughout the whole game as you walk by and the weapons they drop and things like that. Wow. The game also manipulates the camera to make early attempts at fully voice acted cutscenes. It's not perfect and every once in a while it kind of glitches out, but overall it adds to the game more so than just clicking through text boxes like most games that come before it. Even as we speak, they move through Fadark Forest unopposed. They have pillaged our home, Kelethin, and put our loved ones to the sword. Their tracks leave scars upon the land that may never be healed. Mechanically, it's very much a hack and slash game. You can choose from a number of classes, such as the Barbarian, Warrior, Wood Elf Ranger, High Elf Cleric, or a Wizard, or a Dark Elf Shadow Knight. You can level up different skill trees to enhance certain abilities or skills. You can find newer and better gear as the game goes on, which is, you know, the whole loot grinder aspect that Diablo is known for. And you fight legions and legions of orcs and goblins and explore a pretty interesting world. I personally have pretty much zero experience with the EverQuest universe, and that is not detracted from my experience with the game at all. I would imagine, though, that it would add a fair amount to the experience if you are familiar with the lore. One of the really cool features of the game at the time was that it not only had four-player split-screen, but you had online play too. You could import your characters to play online with friends, voice chat using a USB headset, and have fun. It seems like it would have been a blast. However, online play was shut down in April of 2013, so I will not get to experience it. Single tier. Lastly, the game has a freaking beautiful soundtrack. I've been trying to hunt, hunt down a decent quality copy of the soundtrack itself, and it's not easy to find. The only physical copy I can track down is a couple CD listings on eBay in the UK, and they want 40 bucks plus shipping for it, which is a bit much for a CD without even a case. Overall, if you like Diablo, Baldur's Gate, Gauntlet games, Champions of Norath is a must play. It has some decent replayability with the various classes and split screen, and if you find yourself wanting more, there is a sequel. Champions Return to Arms is also available on the PS2. Next up we have Hideo Kojima at his best with Metal Gear Solid 3. I, I've always had a huge fascination and admiration for the Metal Gear franchise, but I've never actually played through it myself. I'm just horrible at it. I'm currently working my way through MGS3, but... It's not going well if you've tuned into my live streams, but I have learned from hours of watching analysis videos and having watched my IRL buddy play through them when we were kids that MGS3 is a good middle ground between Kojima's weird meta dive into making games about gamers with Metal Gear Solid 2 and before all the crazy the nano machines did it madness that took over in Metal Gear Solid 4. So here's my buddy BBK Dragoon who has quite the history with the franchise to give you a little bit of a better description. Metal Gear Solid 3 represents not only a superb technical mastery over developing for the PlayStation 2, but also one of the best games the platform has to offer. 
Kojima's launch title of MGS2 was at the forefront of the PlayStation 2's initial marketing efforts, as it truly showcased what the hardware was capable of. Kojima pushed the tech within the PS2 to its limits from the get-go, with gameplay that still holds up strongly to this day. MGS3 released in 2004, this was four years after the PlayStation 2's launch, giving Kojima and his team time to learn and improve upon the tech they pioneered in MGS2. Metal Gear Solid 3 is the perfect starting point for a player new to the Metal Gear universe. What is essentially a prequel to the MGS series, 3 requires no previous knowledge of characters, plot points, or the grand narrative of the Metal Gear series. Longtime fans of the MGS series will of course get to see the origins of some of the franchise's most important and foundational characters, with plenty of stylistic nods and themes that just ooze of Kojima. Make sure to pick up the Subsistence version of the game, which released in 2006 if you're going to be getting the PlayStation 2 copy. MGS3 Subsistence featured a new third-person camera angle that completely revolutionized the game. The top-down static camera viewpoints of previous MGS games worked better in the urban environments in tandem with a more accessible Soliton radar. The jungles of Metal Gear Solid 3 become far more engaging and easier to navigate strategically with this third-person camera angle, which would ultimately become the primary camera system of the series moving forward. Subsistence also features some bonus camos, better in-game demo theater mode with some hilarious parody cutscenes thrown in. It should be noted that the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection represents an exceptional HD re-release of MGS2, MGS3, and Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, available on the PS3, 360, and PS Vita. The HD Collection was put together with a ton of care for the original source material and represents a phenomenal way to play these games. However, it's hard to beat playing on original PS2 hardware. The gameplay of MGS3 holds up strongly to this day and will take the player on a wild 10 to 15 hour adventure. It's impossible to think about the PlayStation 2's best titles without listing MGS2 and MGS3. MGS2 remains an excellent game worth playing, but requires a bit more knowledge of the franchise's story, common tropes, and thematics. Metal Gear Solid 3 would still be received well if it released today. As a kid, I stayed fairly limited when it comes to trying different franchises of games. I stuck to the ones I knew in many cases. In some ways, that's a good thing, as I've had a blast discovering gems that I never really got to play before. But in the case of Ratchet & Clank, I'm actually kind of sad that I never realized it existed until much later into my adult life, pretty much. I, I would have enjoyed the heck out of these games growing up. Developed by the awesome Insomniac Studios, there are many Ratchet & Clank games to choose from, but I started with Going Commando. This is the second in the franchise, and frequently regarded as one of the best PS2 games ever made, period. Which is impressive. This is third-person action platforming at its best. You travel to planets in the Bogon Galaxy to find parts for your ship, search for the bad guy, rescue friends, and tackle some side quests. You've got rocket launchers, gravity grenades, laser guns, and your trusty melee wrench at your disposal to take down enemies and break stuff to collect the currency of bolts to level up your weapons and buy new ammo and things like that. You fight in both the platforming levels and in spaceship fights, which can be a little frustrating with how the camera works, especially on the, you know, with it being an older game, but it's still fun. The game plays out much like a movie, consistent with how the most recently released movie of the franchise and the PS4 reboot turned out, and is still an enjoyable story to sit through. Some of the humor isn't for me these days, but it can still pull a chuckle out of me and keeps the game feel feeling too serious. Although, it doesn't feel serious at all, which, meh. I haven't finished it just yet, but I've thoroughly been enjoying my time with it. And like I said, if you want to keep playing more Ratchet & Clank games, there are plenty to choose from. <laughs> If you haven't heard of this next one, I should warn you, it'll seem like such a strange recommendation. But surely, surely everyone's heard of Katamari by now, right? Katamari Damacy is a puzzle game. A weird puzzle game. The king of all cosmos got drunk and wiped out the stars and celestial bodies from the sky. So it's you, the five centimeter tall prince that has to go to Earth with a magical ball called a Katamari that sticks to things the smaller than it and grows as you pick things up. Basically how you build a snowman, except instead of snow, you roll up everything. It starts out with the little things, paper clips, food bits, but then you start picking up pets, chairs, people, 
entire buildings eventually, and it gets messy. And once the time is up, your creation is shot into the sky and turned into stars and constellations based on how big of a Katamari ball you were able to make. This requires the use of both analog sticks to maneuver your Katamari around to avoid running into things that you can't pick up yet and build speed. And honestly, it gets quite addicting after a while, especially when you're trying to beat the time and beat your previous best size. There are a couple different game modes, a two-player mode, and a great, although quirky, soundtrack. Katamari Damacy was so unique and successful that they have made eight, yes, eight sequels across a variety of different platforms, including smartphones. Some still regard Damacy as the best Katamari game, but you have some options to choose from. Lastly, we have a game that's very near and dear to my heart. ATV Off-Road Fury. This is just like it sounds, an ATV racing game. You get to pick your character color and choose between a few different ATV models, balancing between traction, top speed, acceleration, handling, and so on, and about 20 different tracks to race on. Game modes include the normal off-road nationals, stadium supercross, a freestyle mode where you can do little tricks on your ATV, cross-country endurance where you're driving through cities and or, you know like suburban areas with train tracks and stuff, and then the pro career and it supports four-way multiplayer. The soundtrack was pretty rockin' for the time, featuring only licensed music, so I can't really play it here. <laughs> this was a game that I sunk so much time into with my dad. On our giant DLP 60-inch TV, it was a blast. We'd try to get high scores over each other, and I, I had a couple uncles and cousins that would join us too sometimes. My family had a brief period when I was about 10 to 12-ish, where we went to another family member's hotel share thing in Daytona Beach, Florida for a few years in a row, and we'd always take the PS2 so my dad and I could put some ATV time in in the hotel room. I've got some good memories with this game. You have to really balance your speed and the angle of your ATV, as you can go flying off of your ride and screw yourself over for positioning in the race. You gotta make sure you pull up on the hill the right way, make sure you land at the right angle, and so on. And if an opponent lands on top of you or you hit a barrier on the side of the map, you will get thrown off your ATV too. So while I'm sure most modern racing games have uh, much stronger skill curves, this game has always felt like a nice balance between mechanics that you have to actually think about a little bit and just being fun arcade racing goodness. And like I said, I'll always have a soft spot for it, just due to the amount of time I put into it with my family. So that's it, that's five PS2 games that you should play, regardless of what platform you actually play on it. If you get the real copy, I prefer playing physical copies on original hardware. You know, it's your prerogative. Metal Gear Solid 3 has of course been ported over to PS3, and they've got the HD collection, they've got uh, different versions. Of course, you, you want the subsistence version, not the Snake Eater version, but other than that, just make sure you play the games. They're a lot of fun, I recommend these. Uh, if you didn't see your favorite game, fear not. Uh, comment with what you think everyone should play from the PS2 library in the comment section down below. We'll probably circle back to this every couple months or so. I want to keep this going. Like I said, PS2 is my favorite console, period. So I want to keep a conversation going about it here on the channel, and I'll have a lot more things to say and quite a few more games to recommend in future episodes. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Subscribe for more awesome tech tips. Go check out BBK Dragoon, who talked to me about Metal Gear and has been helping me out in my live streams. Linked in the video description. And I'm Evil's Vox. I'll catch you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it donor box, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, Go to eposvox.com slash support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com slash Discord. Thanks!